it's Kayla here for Soy and Shay and thank you so much for joining me. Now back in mid 2018 I was in a local dollar store called Daiso. It's a Japanese um, dollar store and they've got lots of really good and interesting things in there. While I was having a hunt around in there one day I spotted these moulds and they're little donut moulds. And I had all sorts of ideas pop through my head about what I could do with them. But I've been putting off using them for a couple of reasons. The first reason was at the time that I purchased them, I was a little bit too busy to work out how much soaping oil I needed to fill up these moulds. And the other reason was the same week that I actually purchased these moulds was the same week that Tierra from Gypsy Fay Creations uploaded a video using them. And she made some really great looking cakes and donuts and things with them. And she's done several videos using this particular mould. So I kind of put off making it because I didn't want to step on her toes. A little while ago she did put up another video using these and she did a lemon seed poppy cake and uh, it just really inspired me to pull them out and give them a go and I mentioned something on her video about it and she said go ahead it is so much fun. So today that is what I am going to do. I am going to go and use these um, these silicon mold and the added bonus is in her last video she so generously shared the actual oil amount that you need to fill up one of these molds so thank you so much Tierra for giving that information it really has made my job easier if you want to go and check out some of her videos I will leave a link to her channel down below in the description box I highly recommend following along with her because she has some amazing ideas but for now, let's go and make some caramel vanilla cakes. Right, so let's get these caramel vanilla cakes started. This is actually going to be a number of days for me to make this, but you're going to see this all in one video. The fragrance oil that I am using today is caramel vanilla from Aussie Candle Supplies. It's a really dark coloured um, fragrance oil. It has a massive 8% vanillin in it so it is most definitely going to turn brown. To combat a little bit of that I am using some bronze sparks mica. This bronze sparks usually leaves a really nice glittery effect in the soap so that is the reason I'm using that to hopefully bring a little bit of texture to the base as it naturally discolors. The other reason I decided to give these cakes a go today is because you would have seen in the last few videos I've said about how I've discovered that the pomace oil is really accelerating my trace. Well I already had a batch of oils made up for another soap that I was going to do which I really didn't want to mess up. So I went out and I bought myself the classic olive oil and I made some new batter or made some more oils up. This batter here or these oils here have that pomace in it. But because I'm basically making one colour, pouring it into the base, I'm not going to be bothered if this sets up quickly. So I thought I would use these oils that I had made up for this base so it didn't go to waste. Now something I am doing a little bit different with this soap today. In my lye water solution here, I have added some sodium lactate in it. It helps the um, soap to actually harden up, which will mean that it will be much easier to get it out of those silicon molds. I use it at a rate of 2% of my oil volume. And I'm going to treat it exactly the same way as I do with any other soap. I'm going to pour my lye water into my soap base, stir it up, add some colour and the fragrance, and then we're going to pour it straight into the molds. I've not yet reached emulsion but because this is only going to be one colour in it I've just decided I am going to throw in my colour right now and I will also throw in the fragrance, give it a blend to get it into that emulsion or even a light trace and then we'll pour it out. molds I have popped them onto these um, trays just to make it easier to move them around. I'm just going to get my spatula out of this one. I was hoping not to make any mess but I've already flipped soap all over the place and let's start pouring and filling these up.
said this was going to be fun and so far it's not so I am really really hoping that the actual decorating is going to be the fun part I have tidied these up to the best of my ability what I'm going to do is leave them sit here for about 48 hours and then I'm going to come back now I can always trim up some of the tops off these I am trying to get them as level as possible because we are going to do a little bit of piping to go in the middle of these as well as decorating the top but for those bits of the recipe I am using my classic olive oil not this pomace all right, so let's get to unmolding these. I'm going to do the pink ones first because I've got a little bit more confidence that these ones are going to look nice, especially this one because it was the first one I actually poured. So all I'm going to do is just pop them straight out. That sodium lactate is really going to help with getting them out like that. I'm not too bothered that this is all lumpy bumpy because we're going to put some cream filling in these in a little while. So I'm just going to pop all of these ones out. some of these I've got those sort of bits that are sticking out I'm just going to take my knife and just trim that top bit off and these ones are looking really nice from this first tray might just move that one out the way into the sink get that little bit out the way and I will start popping these on here all right so this was the next tray I did where it was starting to set up a little bit more so I'm expecting to see a few more little air pockets on these ones so what I do when I get these little air pockets, if you saw my previous video that I did before this one, I showed you how I fix up soaps that have air pockets. What I've got here, this was just all the leftover batter that I had. Um, so what I'm doing with this lot here is just on this underside bit where it's still nice and soft, this becomes pliable like soap dough. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a mash up. And I do do this without gloves on, otherwise I find that the gloves get really sticky and tacky. All I'm going to do is take a little bit of the soap dough and I'm just going to fill it in, using it a bit like wood putty when you go around filling up holes in bits of wood. So I'm just gonna go through, fill them all up, smooth it all out. Just put all that bit down and we are going to put a little bit of icing on these a little bit of cream so it's going to actually really hide any of those imperfections but now we have a perfect looking donut so I'm going to go through and I'm going to unmold all of these and then we'll be back for the next step done what I've had in this little cup that I keep dipping my finger into is a little bit of 70% rubbing alcohol which I'm using just to smooth the soap out now at first I was really disappointed that um, I had so many holes in these donuts as I was unmolding them but I'm actually quite pleased now because when you actually look at them here's some of one of the first ones which I haven't had to fix that is really nice and smooth and shiny, but that one actually looks a little bit more realistic, like a donut that's come out the oven. So it's actually not that bad a thing that they came out all lumpy and bumpy. And by the time I add some cream onto these, you're really not going to know. So I've got one more to do, and then we're gonna move on to doing some of the piping. So while those donuts are just hardening up a little bit after their little makeover there, I am going to make some salts up. So what I've just sprayed into my little glass bowl here is a little bit of 70% rubbing alcohol. Next thing I'm going to do is add in some bronze sparks mica and I'm just going to mix that up together. It doesn't need a lot. Okay, so my mica is now all dissolved in there and what I have in my big bucket here is I have some they're actually quite big grains of salt but I have got some 
um, salt rock crystals. I'm just going to add those in there. And the idea is I'll sprinkle them on the top and make them look like little caramel pieces. So all I'm going to do is, oh, chuck it all over the bench. I'm just going to give it a bit of a mix up. I'm going to throw a few more in there just to soak up all of the mica and alcohol. Give it a stir. Make sure each and every single one of these pieces of um, rock salt is covered in that mica mix. got a few pieces that aren't quite covered rather than adding more mica I'm actually just going to spray some more alcohol which will pick up some of that mica which is dried onto the edge of the bowl and that alcohol will actually evaporate off so don't worry about actually making the salts all wet because it will evaporate off them and then just leave behind that really nice sheen on these salt crop crystals Okay, I am really pleased with how they are looking so I'm going to set these aside just to dry off a little bit and then we will get to doing the tops. So as you can see I have just whipped up a very quick um, batter of soap here using that heat transfer method. I have decided I am going to be calling these caramel vanilla cream cakes and this is just going to be the topping for the cakes. What I'm going to do is pour this into my bigger bowl here because it's going to make it easier to actually ice these cakes. So I'm going to empty all that in there and then I'm going to leave this sit for a couple of minutes just so that it firms up because this is just way too runny at the moment. All right, so this has been sitting here for about five minutes now. I think it is about right to go. We've got somewhere between a light and a medium trace on this soap, so it's just thick enough to actually hold on to um, the tops of these donuts, but it's not so thick that it will just end up being really gloopy. So I'll just go and grab my donuts. Right, so I actually reserved the, the dodgier looking ones for the top and that is just so it had a bit more of a realistic look to them. What I am going to do is just going to take my one half of my donut here and I'm just going to dip it in to my soap batter, give it a twist and lift it up. And that is looking really, really nice. So I can actually double dip these but I'm thinking, hmm, yes, no. Yeah, let's go for a double dip on it and see what we get because I've got plenty of batter here. As I'm picking it up, giving it a twist. And now I'm just going to pop it down on this other tray. So again, I'm just going to grab one of these. This is a lovely, messy project, I must say. So I'm going to dip, twist, and I'm going to lift up. And that's actually given it a really nice coating. So I'm not going to double dip that one. I'm just going to let that soap settle to where it wants to go and grab my next one. So again, I'm just dipping, twisting, and twisting as I pick it up as well. And we'll get all that excess off and down on here. Right, I'm just going to grab myself a clean dishcloth as well, um, just so I can make sure I'm not getting soap everywhere else. Give that a dip, twist and lift up. So I'm going to get all of these ones done up and then we'll come back and put some more decorations on the top. This bit of soap go to waste that I've got in here. I actually need some green soap dough making up so I'm just going to add a bit of mica into there that's been dissolved in some oil. I'm going to give this a stir up and then I'm going to pour it into a mold and then once that's set up it will go into my soap dough box. Okay so because this has already been such a messy project let's go for gold. First thing I'm going to do is give that a quick spritz with some rubbing alcohol just to try and keep at bay any soda ash that I may get. I will continue to keep spraying them as they are setting up 
the first thing I am going to do, I have got some clear melt and pour here, which I have added in some grandeur mica and just a tiny little bit of bronze sparks just to caramelize it a little bit. I am going to grab a pipette. I'm just going to squeeze some of it up into my pipette here and I'm going to dribble it just across the top like so. And this is to make it kind of look a little bit like some caramel sauce sitting on the top of these. And then just to really finish the tops of these off, I'm just going to add just a couple pieces of what I hope to look like caramel chunks. Going to let them sit overnight so that they actually um, firm up so when we go to do the bottom of these cakes I don't smudge and mar them all. So we'll be back later to finish these off. finished. In my piping bag I've got a Wilton 2D tip so it's just like a little, I know it's almost like an open star that's had all of its ends squishied on in and I've got all of my bases for my donuts here and what I'm going to do is just put a ring of cream around each of these halves of the donut. I'll start in the middle and then kind of work my way out and just come back in again and I am going to leave them sit for just a little while just to firm up before I put those on the top. So I'm just going to leave them down on the base here and I'm going to go all the way around and fill in that little middle bit as well. I want them to come right to the edge of these cakes. It looks like there's lots and lots of cream in them and keep going. Alright, so we are almost done with making these cakes. The first step of this really wasn't much fun, but that is entirely my fault um, for having that pomace oil in here and not knowing how this fragrance oil actually behaves. So I don't actually know if that caramel vanilla is responsible for any acceleration at all, but I know that that pomace oil is. But you know what, this decorating bit has been fun. This has been about three days for me to make each of the different components to go on here but I think it is going to be well worth it in the end and I am actually now having a lot of fun designing them and I have actually been thinking of some others that I could do as well and some other ideas I could do with this donut mould so I can't wait to start giving that a go. Oh dear, so I am actually short for two of these donut rings, but that's okay. I do have another soap that I have got sitting on the side, and I know that I have actually um, over-measured how much oil I am going to need for this next soap, so I'll actually borrow a little bit of soap, or a little bit of the, um, the oils and that out of the next one, and I will finish piping those two. Okay, what I'm going to do next in my jug, I've got some of that leftover melt and pour and I'm actually just going to drizzle it so it runs down the side of the cream and looks like we have got some of that caramel syrup on the inside of these. So I'm just going right around the actual edges hoping that it fills, like dribbles down some of that ribbon effect that the piping has made. And hopefully when we put the tops on, you will get to see some of that caramel sauce. And now all I'm going to do is take these tops that we made 
and I am just going to very gently sit them on the top. I don't want them squishing that cream down. We'll just gently sit them there like that. And what I will probably have to do is, because they're a little bit too delicate right now, is actually bring you down for a look at them once these have started to set up. take a closer look at these caramel vanilla cream cakes. I am so pleased with how these have come up. They are looking and smelling just like a caramel cream cake would. You can see that where that melt and pour has started to peek on through and looks like there is caramel filling all through the center of these cakes too. They are smelling absolutely wonderful so they are going to need a do not eat sticker on the packaging as well just to prevent anyone from trying to take a bite of them. I hope you have enjoyed watching me make my caramel vanilla cream cakes. I have enjoyed making them. Thank you, Tiara, for encouraging me to have a go at them. If you did like watching me make these, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you are new around here and you haven't already, why not subscribe to the channel and if you hit the little bell sign, it will let you know when I bring up the next video. So thank you to all those who are subscribed and continue to support me on my journey here. And until the next time, have a great week. Bye.